Daniel, your host of the Mirror Sphere. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for watching this video. Um, this video is just a cover. I have watched all the seasons and, a, and the last episode just finished for um, Deep Space Nine. How do I feel about this show as a whole? I fucking loved it. <laughs> right now, I haven't watched Voyager yet at all. So putting that beside, Deep Space Nine is my all-time favorite. I like it way more than I like TNG. I liked it more than Enterprise, except for the original. The original always will have a special place in my heart. But man, there's such good episodes in this series. There's a couple bad ones here and there, but for the most part, you know, I don't like the whole mirror universe thing. I, I just don't care for it. And time travel kind of bugs me. But God, I love these episodes. And if you ever know, Frank Sinatra is my all-time favorite singer. So when they have the whole later on when uh, Bashir gets his uh, Hollow Sweet program of Vic, it is my favorite episodes of all time because you get to see, you know, he's got that lounge, that you know, the 1920s style lounge where everybody wears suits and ties. And he sings Frank Sinatra songs. You know, the, the, the songs from the Rat Pack and it just, I love it. I love those songs. And every episode I had him in it, I was like smiling my ass off because I knew he would sing one of his songs and I would be like, oh God, yeah. Oh man. I'm going to be a little bit romantic at heart, I guess, because I love Frank Sinatra songs. The man was a great singer and his, his uh, you know, Dean Martin and all these guys just were awesome. Um, we don't have men like that anymore. We don't. I just don't see those kind of songs anymore. You know, the ones that will will go after you die hundreds of years later. You know, I think for, you know this is really like makes me smile because it's hundreds of thousands of our years in our future, and Frank Sinatra's music still is a place to go and just sit and listen to his songs. It's fucking amazing. Every season kept me on edge and kept me entertained. Even when the ending was so much better than TNG and Enterprise, they killed it at the end. They literally, because I watched it, it had part A and part B put together. So it was, 130, it was an hour and 30 minute, 130, hour and 30 minute long episode. My God, was it good. You know, the whole, I thought it was really good when they finally defeat the defend, Dominion. And, you know, Odo, everybody's going their own separate ways. I thought if it ended right there, it would be perfect. But they didn't. They had to go just above and beyond. And they had Cisco complete his tasks, sacrifice himself, destroy the Paul Wraith and um, Gal Dukat. Oh, but God. The show was amazing, and I will be talking about it live as I have done TNG. I am not doing my TNG live stream today. I've decided to hold that off till next week since it is my last day here. So you'll no longer see this box background or anything else because that will be my last day doing it there, and that'll be my last live stream from this place. And. This is going to be a crazy journey. It really is. My next step in life is going to be heart-wrenching insanity. But that's what we have to do when we grow. You know, when you get older, sometimes you got to make decisions for the best of your family. And I'm doing that. Also, we came up with a name to my child. His name is going to be Asher Griffin Cunningham. That's right. We decided on Asher as a first name. Griffin is a middle name. And of course, my last name is Cunningham, so he'll have my last name as Cunningham. Um, so this is, this is a pretty crazy moment. He'll be born sometime in March. We don't have an exact day yet. Um, but I'll tell you, it's going to be great. Back to, back to the uh, Deep Space Nine. I love every single character. I don't think there's, except for the new, uh, Jets, or new Dax, I didn't really like her. I just didn't. I miss Jetsia. 
the last season when it first started and she died, I was just, oh, I was devastated because I really liked her and Worf together. They had this bond. I was hoping they would bring her back and maybe they do in a movie or something, but they don't here. Uh, the new Dex is a therapist. She's kind of a younger, more inexperienced, has no idea what she's doing therapy therapist you know and then she falls in love with um Bashir which I thought was interesting but it's just it's not Jetsia Jetsia had this like fire about her her and Worf just connected and you loved it and you loved when they were together and they fought side by side and when she was gone I was just like damn but they do have a possibility of making Cisco come back uh, when he sacrifices himself, the prophets from the thing bring him to the celestial temple and pretty much make him one of them. He's no longer a physical being, at least not for now. He said that he's going to be trained and he's got to learn because he's got more tasks he has to do for the prophets. And that one day he will return. It will be a year from now. It will be, you know, the day before because it's their timeline. There, the, for the prophets, there's no time, sense of time. There's no past, no present. It's all together. And they can manipulate time just like anything else. And it's crazy how powerful these prophets are. They make like a thousand Jibadar ships just fucking disappear like that. Which was actually pretty cool to see because they're all coming through like, we're all going to conquer and then they're just gone. And everybody's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Oh my god, it was so good. The show really, I liked how it was at like one, almost like one central station where everything in this quadrant is so important to this base. And just, you know, the people, Cork was one of my favorite characters with him and, um, him and, uh, fuck it, my mind just stopped. Uh, Odo, yeah, him and Odo were fucking great. I love that freaking chemistry they have where he, you know, Odo's trying to get away, or not Odo, but uh, Cork is trying to get away with shit, Odo has to come and stop him, and then where his brother becomes a freaking Grand Magus was hilarious, because you don't know anything, the Ferengi are very, capital. they're like, when capitalism goes too far, which I liked about this show, because they showed the good and the bad of every side. And finally, the Fringy were starting to have female rights and social programs and taxes and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, Cork was like, no! And so they passed the baton on to his brother. And I was like, what? <laughs> and so his brother becomes a new Grand Magus, new leader of Ferneg. Fren uh, Fren uh, I can't say it right now. Their alliance, and I thought that was hilarious because he comes in thinking he's gonna become the Grand Magus, and the Grand Magus like, "Oh, I thought I'm talking to your brother." That was actually a pretty close impression. And he hands the turn over to the brother. I, I was like, "What?" <laughs> oh my god, the show was great. I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss watching the show. I have Voyager coming up next, so I've heard that it's not as good as DC's 9, so I'm kind of a little disappointed in that. I'll have to judge it for myself, but this will be my final Star Trek show. I may go back and watch the, all the original stuff over again, like not, not these ones, but the original Star Trek over after all this is done, just to see, just to go back and watch where it all started again. God, I love these shows. You know, they have an episode where you meet, um, where they actually meet Kirk. They go back in time and they meet Kirk. And that was a fucking great episode. And there were so many good episodes in this. It's nuts. And, oh my gosh, was it so much fun. You know, I was actually pretty surprised. I've said this before, but um, Picard is such a big character in Star Trek. Because, I mean, his old show and everything. But they never mention him again after TNG. Unless they do in Voyager, I don't know. But I know in Deep Space Nine, never mentioned. Because they think he's, I think they say his name one time. But Warp says his name one time. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. My eyes was kind of watering. Anyways. Yeah, an eyelash in my fucking eye. Whew. Anyways. Oh, it was so good. 
this show, I would rate it a 9 out of 10. It had some flaws, but my God, was it good. The music, how much the story, the stories were so good. There's a couple stories in there that are like, but most of the stories were done really well. You you saw both sides of the argument, you know, with religion and politics and how it shouldn't be mixed. And if it does, you know, things are problematic and we, it was really good really 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 good and I was so happy with the ending and I really liked the flashbacks in the ending I, I kind of thought worse flashbacks were kind of off because they kept showing Tam and that the new Dax they should have shown him with Dadzia and all those times on the ship with her now he's emissary to the um, the Klingons and the Federation, you have his brother, who's because he, he adopted to um, General Torcock, Torcock, something like that, some family. That guy, he fights, kills the, um, I can't remember his name right now, he kills the old leader of the Klingons, gives it to his brother, who's, no, it's not his actual brother, but his adopted brother, a general, and makes him leader of the entire Kard or Kardashian. We're not Kardashian, Klingon, sorry. <laughs> Klingon Empire. And now he's ambassador, so he's leaving. Uh, engineer um, O'Brien is going back to Earth to be a teach in the academy as a professor. Uh, it is, it's crazy, and I really love this show. Him and the doc had a very great relationship, the best buddies. You know, they were thick and thin, they f fought together, you know, all this stuff. You know, you got section 13, fucking, it's kind of stupid. Um, other than that, it, this show is really good, guys. Really good. If you have not watched Deep Space Nine and you, you're like, I don't really like Star Trek, Deep Space Nine is different. It's not like TNG. It doesn't have all the craziness of TNG. It's got some craziness, but it's really good. And those Vic episodes, my God, every one of them I loved. Every single one of them, I'm not going to lie. I don't know, maybe it's just because I like that kind of music, but, ugh. Listening to him sing up on stage, one where him and the Cap, or Cap Cisco goes up there and stands with him and sings together, that was pretty cool, okay? I was like, yeah, ugh, love this show. Thank you all for coming. Please share, like, and subscribe to this channel. If you have not, please, please do. Uh, next week, I will do my final season overall thoughts of TNG with Wes and hopefully Pat Steven Seagal and whoever else I can get on. It'll be the final one where we cover season seven and then we just talk about the show and how we felt, what we compare it to the original Star Trek or Enterprise or even I'll even compare it to this one. And we'll have a chat, maybe talk about some, you know, episodes of this and Deep Space Nine, but... And then, starting after that, my first live stream, when I get my office set up, my first major live stream will be talking about Deep Space Nine seasons. I'm starting to go through the seasons, and what I felt like different episodes, and so on and so forth. Hopefully with Wes and some other guys, if I can get the timing right. And we'll go over Deep Space Nine, and then Voyager at the end. And then we'll go back to the original Star Trek, and that's where I want to end it up. It's going back to the original Star Trek, having fun just watching episodes with them, having fun talking about good Star Trek, especially right now, I know that the people who are watching the new stuff are having just, it's killing them, and they need this where we can sit down and talk about good Star Trek, and it helps. And right now I know this week has been hard on a lot of people, it's stressful on a lot of people because this, this election has been absolutely garbage. You know, I'll do that for another time now. But thank you all for coming. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you have not, please hit that like button, smash that like button, <laughs> and share this out. And hopefully my channel will keep growing as we continue to go into the next year and in the year after and the year after. I don't ever plan on stopping this. And when, when my book is done and out, I will, I will dedicate part of my channel to just talking about my books, talking about my stories, 
and that stuff with other authors and then and our experiences on starting our first book and how fucking scary it is because it's terrifying it really is and it's a lot of work but thank you all be at peace be good to each other and let's hope with this after this election shit's over we all can just stop this whole political bullshit shit can go back to just loving entertainment so I'll see you next time in the Mirror Sphere. Bye.